possibly the staff anchor right now. A perfect 10-0 when the offense gets him two or more runs of support. He will need to be on his game tonight to get the Nats back in the win column. The Nats have been given some hard games on this homestand by the Phillies, the Orioles, and now the Mets. Time to get with the program. Anthony Rendon on the cover. He's also going to be on third base tonight. We hope as a base runner a couple of times. Bob and FP, welcome to game two of the three-game series. So the Braves lose again today, eight in a row. The Nats are three and a half games up on Atlanta, not playing the greatest baseball. So is all well with the baseball club? Absolutely. I mean, it's August. It's a pennant race. It's the biggest divisional lead in the whole league. So I say things are good. You look at the Nats right now, up three and a half games. They really haven't played their best baseball yet. And it's time to look at the scoreboard. It's time to embrace the pennant race that's going on right now. And you, know, you talk about a lot of teams wish they were in the Nats spot right now. There's been a lot of negative talk about the ball club lately, but three and a half games up and, you know, put your helmet on, put your mouthpiece in, buckle up and enjoy the ride. Sometimes it's about the journey and not the destination. And right now, it's just starting to get fun. In fact, I'm looking at the positive. That was the fair pole, not the foul pole next to that graphic here at the ballpark. Let's talk about the pitchers. <laughs> Jonathan Nisa Times has been tough on the Nats in his big league career, but Washington good against left-handed pitching this year. They they have been good against left-handed pitching. They've been good against Jonathan Neese. Look at May 16th here at Nats Park. Four innings pitch, five runs. And look at Doug Fister. Get him two runs. We say the magic number is four tonight. It's two for Fister. Get him two, and he's 10-0. and 0. Unbelievable. Usually the Nats have to win four to guarantee win. Mets aren't throwing in the towel yet. They're playing some tough baseball right now. And the Nats will take them on tonight in game two. Needing some offense. Needing some guys to touch home. We've seen good defense. Some pitching. Well, going both ways in this series. Game two. Not a must win, but you need one to get things back right again. Brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you by visitannapolis.org. Find it here and by Samuel Adams for the love of beer. We love defense and we love watching Doug Fister. 
Yeah, he gives you nine really good defenders out there when he goes. He will take the mound, Fister will, for the 16th time this year. 79 degrees. Visit trainsearch.com to find your local train comfort specialist dealer. It's hard to stop a train really hard. And staying on our positive theme, there's a 60% chance it will not rain during the ball game tonight. 60? The Mets right. are hitting 237. They're ninth in runs, though, and Daniel Murphy is a hit machine. He's hitting 320 on the road. On a three-game hitting streak, six for 13, wears out the Nats. He did it again last night on base four times. A couple of RBIs, two singles, a triple, and a walk. Get Daniel Murphy out in front of David Wright. You've got a good chance to beat the Mets. Uh, Doug Fister's arsenal, two-seam fastball, slider, curveball change. Five and one at home this year, Fister is. Two, three, six ERA. In 42 innings at home, he struck out 29 and walked just five. Going through his routine right now with Anthony Rendon, making sure everybody's where they're supposed to be before he takes the mound for the 16th time this year. And Fister has beaten the Mets before. It was for the Tigers last year at City Field, August 23rd. Outdueled Dice K. Gave up just a run on eight hits in six and a third innings. Curtis Granderson, 0 for 16. Back in the lineup tonight against a right hander. Leads off hitting 275, actually 225. And 1 for 6 career against Fister. So they know each other a bit from the American League. And a fastball right in there. We're underway at 706. Mets are 54 and 59. Seven back of the Nats. Pitch number two coming before we were ready. And there's Larry Vanover, the crew chief, 22nd year in the big leagues. Dan Isanya, Vic Carapaza, Paul Nart on the bases. Veteran crew, a good one. That is right on the inside edge, one and two. Pitch up. Granderson a fly to right. Jason Worth on the move. He'll slide right into the catch. But we always talk about being ready to play from the first hitter of the game on. And Jason Worth just told you he's absolutely ready to play. And it was a ball like this off the bat of Zach Wheeler that fell in last night. And Jason Worth on his horse early. Nice sliding catch. Took out a little divot right there. Nice skid mark in right field. Good play to start this one up. And Jerry Blevins obviously likes that. Here's Daniel Murphy. He's 0 for 3 career against Fister. And circling behind it, Danny Espinosa getting the start at second base tonight to get his right handed bat in the lineup. And set the defense for the Nats tonight. Jose Lobaton behind the plate. Wilson Ramos will be back shortly at the birth of his daughter. Danny Espinosa gets the start at second base. And I love Doug Fister before the first pitch of every game. He almost goes roll call with his infield. He goes to Rendon, points to Desmond. <laughs> and the last thing he does, he stands about five feet behind the mound and he looks at Adam LaRoche. They make eye contact, they point at each other, and it's game on. I love it. Yeah. Very nice with all the Coast Guard guys here tonight, too. All present and accounted for. Well, if you're a sinker ball guy and you rely on the ground ball, you better make sure your infielders are ready. I like it. Doug Fister and David Wright. It's a matchup that's never happened before right now. Inside out swing. David fouls it off to the right. And Doug Fister is ahead. That was pretty close on 02. Kept it down, 89. Well, he likes to elevate that fastball after you get you looking down there. Pop one letter high. All right, let's see what eye levels he changes here. There it is up. And the inning's over. Larry Vanover quick verbally with the call. Took us a while to spot it visually. And Doug Fister, a quick one, two, three. Off to a good start with a fly ball to grounder. And a call third strike on a good right-handed batter.
12 against left-handed starters this year. Eighth in the league in batting, fifth in runs. And Danny Espinosa, career against Jonathan Nice. Maybe a pick to click tonight with a double, five for 12. Batting in the number seven spot behind Harper, ahead of Lobatone tonight. And that's the lineup that'll face Jonathan Nice, three and one, two, eight, three, in eight career starts against Washington. Yeah, two seam fastball, four seam fastball. They'll also cut it, so he's got a fastball that goes two ways and a straight fastball. Curveball 16% of the time, and he'll throw a changeup as well. 21st start of the year for Nice. And he's a guy with two strikes that'll like to backdoor that cutter to right handers. You gotta stay on it. He'll get you thinking on. about the inner half and then pop one outside late, so. Nats have had their success against left-handers this year. We'll see how they do tonight. 27-year-old Southpaw. Denard Spans one for five career against him with a base on balls. David Wright's on the grass at third. Span past the mound. The race is on. Murphy throwing across his body and doing it well for the first down. And Daniel Murphy knowing the speed of Denard Span also knew he had to come get this baseball. So a chopper over the mound. Denard Span smelling infield hit all the way, but Murphy, like Jason Worth, ready to play baseball. Nice play by the Mets second baseman. Next up, Anthony Rendon. He's one for six career against Nice. Last night, the table setters, Spana Rendon, went two for eight. Had hits back to back in the third. But those guys with Worth have been carrying the load. Somebody else is going to have to step up on those rare nights when these guys don't get a lot of hits. That one heading for the scoreboard beyond the reach of Juan Lagares. And Anthony Rendon is going to reach the 30 mark in doubles on the year with his 49th extra base hit. Well, in honor of his 30th double, we got to drop a Tony two bags on him, don't we? Going the other way. This ball tailing away from Juan Lagares, a guy that covers tons of ground in the outfield. Good effort by Lagares, but he was really nowhere near it. Knew the fence was coming. So Anthony Rendon with a one out double, and there goes a the no hitter. Jason Worth this year. The Nats most effective hitter against left handed pitching at 340. It's the seventh highest average against Southpaws in the league. He's had seven career hits against Nice. Larry Vanover calls it a strike. Seven for 23 with an RBI and a walk. Tanner Roark bested Jonathan Nice here on Friday. May 16th, that ball falling around third. Rendon, the Nets, that quickly take a one nothing lead. Great read. And the last time this pitcher faced the Nats in this park, Worth had a first inning RBI single. Well, we talk about knowing where your outfielders are playing, checking your outfield, checking your infield before every pitch. Watch Anthony Rendon. He decides this is going to drop. That's with one out. He read it almost like there was two outs. Knew where the defenders were, saw that ball was going to drop, and made it easy for Bob Henley to send him. Great read by Rendon, and Jason Worth will take that hit every single day of the week and twice on Sunday. Watch Rendon. Just kind of squares up to the baseball. He senses it's going to drop, and then finally just trusts it. Nicely done. Jonathan Nice has now given up four first inning runs at Nationals Park this year. Here's LaRoche. If you're scared of making an out, if you're worried about getting thrown out, you don't make that read Rendon did. That was fearless and aggressive and intelligent. Well, Matt Williams said before the game today, we're not going to change who we are and how we run and how we play because of a play that happened last night when a guy made a perfect throw.
Adam, two home runs, six career RBIs against Nice. Skipper said a lot before the game today. That he I absolutely had loved it. LaRoche jacks one to right center. See you later. A monstrous home run. The Nationals lead 3-0. Fourteenth tater of the year for LaRoche, and he knew it as soon as he hit it, and so did we. Nats jumping out to a three-nothing lead on the LaRoche homer. Watch the extension right here. Great balance, torque throughout the swing, throw the bat head, and gets a hug from his pitching coach because he Stake Doug Fenster to a three-run lead. Look at that. Look at the balance throughout the swing. Head to the baseball. The high finish that is the patented Adam LaRoche swing. 14th of the year. 231st of his career. And a big inning for the Nats. Ian Desmond with a 1-1 count. And he hits it hard to center right at Juan Lagares. That's a good sign. Good swing. Yeah, he's taking it right up the middle. Ian, by the way, came into that AB three for 18 against his lefty. So that's one of the best swings he's ever had against the left-hander. And here's the swing again. Well, we haven't seen a whole lot of taters lately. So let's watch it, admire it, and soak it in. He just told the trainer, I injured that ball. Not that he would boast. His last home run was July 22nd on that Tuesday at Colorado against Rex Brothers, a left-hander. Bryce Harper against Jonathan East is two for six with a pair of walks. Ball two. Tenth homer Nice has given up this year. The Nats hit their 89th. Now Larry Vanover, one of the more deliberate umpires with the visual strike call. Well, this is where Jonathan Neese needs strikes if he's going to stay in this game for a while, even though it's below the zone and didn't get the benefit of that call. He's got to get the ball down because he's had three balls hit right on the screws here in the first. Three two to Bryce. And a bouncer right side. Nice late in covering. And so Lucas Duda has to do it himself with a dive to the bag. Rendon a double. Worth a single. Adam LaRoche a blast. Way over the scoreboard. Nats three. Mets nothing early.
there, I'm going to tell you what. This is when you slide into first base. When you see a collision coming, if he runs through that, it's him versus Lucas Duda. And Lucas Duda is a big man and had a lot of steam going right there. And what we did notice that it's Bryce Harper's left thumb, and he saw Duda step on the base, and he decided very intelligently to keep that hand away from the base. So he saw himself out right there in the middle of his dive and just kind of slid by the base. His hand didn't hit it. So everybody did everything right right there, except for maybe Jonathan Neese, who could have gotten over a little quicker. Top of the second. Doug Fister, 10th pitch. And he faces Lucas Duda. Their first career matchup shift on. Danny Espinosa well out into right field. It's in the bullpen. <laughs> Rendon's up the middle. Desmond home at short. That's Anthony right next to Vic Carapazza out there. And Fister misses up and in. Two balls, one strike. Drilled center field. Lucas Duda, second hit of this series. All right, folks, remember our Washington, D.C. Lexus dealers are donating $250 to the Children's National Medical Center for every home run a Nationals player hits this season. So keep them coming. It's for a wonderful cause, Lexus, the pursuit of perfection. That's a my beard's better than your beard right there. First baseman. Slugging first baseman. Slugging lefty first baseman with beards in the same division. Your That's baseball. Go. Two slugging first basemen on the same bag in the same ballpark. It is. Same division. Travis Darno, the catcher. Time zone. Hitting 220. Drills it. One hopper. Rendon. Nice pick. Espinosa. Nice turn. 5-4-3. And Duda went after Danny Espinosa. Good clean slide. For a second baseman, that's a challenge on a one-hop bullet to the third baseman to get there in time. Rendon takes a shuffle. That allows Espinosa to get there, hustled to the bag. A little sidearm delivery gets Lucas Duda down, and Espinosa does the dance over the top of Lucas Duda in a nice 5-4-3. And base is empty in a hurry. Well, Darno hits into his ninth double play of the year. Here's Kirk Neuenheis, the left fielder. He had a bunch of their lefties on the bench last night with Geo starting the series. Neuenheis. Tomorrow he'll be 26 years of age. He's been up and down with the Mets this year. 189 at the big league level last year. Two years ago, hit his first major league home run against Edwin Jackson. Uh, Duda going hard in his second base, but it's, it's good, clean baseball by the Mets' first baseman. And watch Espinosa avoid Lucas Duda, who comes to get him. But he drops down, and look at Duda. He's got to get down, or he's going to take one right in the coconut. Espinosa does the dance over the top. That's a great shot. I like that dropping down. You usually don't see Danny do that. He's more of an over the top second baseman, but right there. The best way to get a runner to hit the turf is to throw it right at him. They'll get out of the way. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Foul tip into the mid of Lobaton. Two innings. Doug Fister. Two strikeouts. He's faced the minimum thanks to the double play and has a nice early lead.
to the playoffs. Great looking family right there. That should be a massive fan photo of the day. At Season Plan Holders, you can renew your plans right now for 2015 and reserve 2014 postseason tickets. Fans who upgrade their plans for 2015 before September 5th, you also have an opportunity to receive upgraded seats for the 2014 postseason. For all renewal and postseason ticket details, visit nationals.com slash 2015. Denny Espinoza goes up swinging. Bottom of the second underway. At bats, few and far between for Danny in the last week now since the arrival of his Jubal Cabrera. But he is nine for his last 29 with five RBIs, 10 ball games. Right handed batting average at a season high 309. And as we mentioned early, five for 12 against Jonathan East with a double. Even though the Nats lost last night, they've beaten the Mets five out of seven this year. They've split the four here. And Danny Espinosa gone for the first out. Jonathan Neese, first K. Inside the numbers with STG Inc. Now the Giants have the same number of wins the Nats do against lefties with seven more losses. Brewers like to pound left handers as do the Dodgers and Miami respectable as well. Seven over against left handed starters. By the way, in that Atlanta game today, they were beaten seven to three by Chris Young. Julio Tehran took that loss. Eight in a row FP for the Braves on that road trip. That ball is going to take a hop right back to Murphy for a moment. Looked like it might move away from him. So the Nationals, despite not playing world beater baseball right now three and a half game lead and they could tack on another half game tonight. Well it's the biggest lead of any division in the National League and like I said in the open you know the first response of that from the negative side would be it, it should be bigger but it's still the biggest lead of any division and you know you hear all the talk about this should be better or that could be better they're not playing well you know for me and experience in a lot of this it's about enjoying the journey and enjoying the ride and embracing the race because before you know it all is going to be over and you're going to be wishing you had baseball again so everybody worried about yeah they should be six up they should be seven up this guy's doing this that guy's doing that i mean do you know how many teams wish they were three and a half games up right now do you know how many cities wish they had a first place ball club enjoy it man it doesn't happen very often and if you're not enjoying it, I can't help you. It's pennant race baseball. It's time to start watching scoreboards. It's time to enjoy pennant race baseball and have fun with it. Is it nerve wracking? Yeah. Does it make your stomach turn? Yeah. <laughs> but that's part of the journey. Put your helmet on, put your chin strap on, and let's go. Let's do this. I am not at all disagreeing with you. But I do think it shows that our fans are knowledgeable about the game. They're breaking things down. Well, I'm not just you know, talking about fans. I'm talking about a lot of different aspects of this. What else are you talking about? Well, just everybody in general. Okay. You know, it's pennant race baseball. It's what it's all about. If you're a player, if you're a coach, if you're a fan, if you're a broadcaster, you got to absolutely love this and hope that it happens all the time. But it doesn't. That's why I got to enjoy it.
game two days ago. Might remember that sliding catch that Denard Span made in center when he took up a whole chunk of the turf out there and got a great reaction from the fans. I talked to Denard today about that reaction, the, both in when he was after that play and when he came in and got a standing ovation as well. He said that that really meant a lot to him, and it was the length of the ovation that he was really impressed with. And yesterday when he came out for stretch, he said he got a really nice ovation then as well. And I, I mentioned to Denard that it seems like fans are really embracing him in his second year with the team. He said that he thinks fans are realizing what he brings on an everyday basis now. He's not going to hit home runs, obviously, but he impacts the game in a lot of other ways. He doesn't get a lot of recognition nationally, maybe as much as he deserves, but Span said he doesn't care about that. He plays for the other 24 guys in his clubhouse and for the home fans. That's what he cares about, and that's why that ovation the other day meant so much to him. He's doing it all for this ball club right now. Both sides of the ball. And the added element, of course, base running, part of that offense. 0-1, and a ball bounces twice, gets to Danny Espinosa off the bat of Juan Ligaris. STG Inc. takes us inside the numbers with Doug Fister and the staff. And obviously, we're talking franchise. All those other years are Expos years. So unprecedented success for the Nationals staff at home with the ERA, led by their mentor, Steve McCaddy. By the way, that was Dan with our FCA sideline report, the Association for Global Security Professionals. So the Nats by three and a half. They could make it four. They could go to Atlanta four and a half up as the Braves are done with their West Coast trip. And that is right in on the hands of Ruben Zahada. Look out in the camera well. Fister, by the way, first two innings. 24, or rather 20 pitches, 14 strikes. Highlighted by that sparkling 5 4 3 double play. Two, two. Keep doing going a little now. scoreboard watching as you talked about. Miami got a run in the first at Pittsburgh. Pirates have three in the bottom. Right now the Marlins are only five and a half out. They're still a factor in this division. Now it's 4-1 Pittsburgh. Got him. Be patient. Larry Vanover will let you know the pitch if you can't hear him like we can through our headsets and Mercedes will track it. Well, Larry Vanover's hunting strikes. There's no doubt about it. A good frame by Lobatone and Vanover does his best in Rico Palazzo and rips the pages. Number nine man, Jonathan Neese. If he starts moonwalking on hitters back there, then we got problems. I think the hitters would eject him for showing them up. You know, it's a two-way street sometimes. <laughs> a little bit inside, 1-1. One, one. Jonathan Neese won for 31 this year. And prior to the season, he had swung the bat pretty well. 149 career hitter, counting that one for 31. It's 13 career RBIs. 27-year-old lefty. Now it comes sliding in. Seventh rounder back in 05 out of Ohio. And Fister goes after him and just misses. Three and two. That was better than strike three to Ruben Tejada. Ground ball, Espinosa. Three innings, one hit, 
nine batters faced. So at a minimum, Fister on his game tonight. by the D.C. Lottery. The D.C. Lottery presents the Friday Fun Concert Series at the Fairgrounds, two hours pre and post game each Friday. It's fun to play the D.C. Lottery. And by Navy Federal Credit Union. Four million members, four million stories. Navy Federal Credit Union. A lot of action on the infield in this one. Look at the spin on Danny Espinosa's sidearm relay to Adam LaRoche. Great stuff, good defense. Bottom of the third coming up. Span, Rendon Worth, Freight Railworks looks at the do up inning and what they've done this homestand. Denard Span, 10 hits in six games before tonight. Anthony Rendon at 320 and Jason Worth. Not a lot of hits, but he's made them count with a couple of doubles and four batted in. It's a two and four homestand. Two wins over the Phillies and now consecutive losses to the Orioles and the Mets. Span bounced one over the mound first time up. Daniel Murphy came into his right and made a fine play to throw him out. Denard shows bunt. Haven't seen much of that lately because his swinging hits have been so great. One one. Spann rips it to left field. Stays on the ball beautifully and got the sweet spot on it for his 126th hit. I reached base safely in 32 consecutive games and counting. Five away from the league high. Longest active streak in the big leagues. And you wonder why Span squared around early? Well, there's always the threat of bunt, but then when you show bunt, David Wright actually took another step in. So he drew right in and then slapped it by him to left. Classic leadoff baseball right there. Anthony Rendon banged one off the scoreboard first time. Really got the Nats going in the first with that one out double. Worth blooped one, dropped it into right center to drive him in. Adam LaRoche drove one out of the park. Big inning, first time around. Oh. 
And by the way, that's a 10 game hitting streak for Denard Span. He's doing so many things. When I fill in his name in the leadoff spot in my book every night, there's hardly room to put everything in there that he's doing. It's crazy how good he's going. The best thing about all those things you just said might be that you fill in his name out in the leadoff spot <laughs> in your book every single night. You know, I should just write it in for like the next two weeks well, and no, see what happens. You can't do that. Baseball gods will not like that. But, I mean, he's posting is my point. He's in there every day grinding. Three and one. Good take by Rendon on a close pitch. As we mentioned earlier, Worth wearing out left-handers this year. Anthony Rendon, a pitch away from two men on for the number three hitter. Up the middle it goes. Nice play Tejada to Murphy and the Mets turn a sparkling double play of their own. Yeah, pretty good range by Tejada right here. This ball looked like it might sneak up the middle, but you see him shading him up the middle. Good flip to Murphy and once Murphy gets it, that's all she wrote. I mean, Taylor made double play. Denard Spam couldn't even get on Murphy to slide. Look at the flip right there. Foot on the bag. It's a simple flip on that small looks awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing how the ball just hangs in the air. Jason Worth. RBI number 63, first time up. What time one of those fell in for the Nats after all the flares we've seen fall in for the other ball clubs that have been in the park on this homestand. Jason now eight for 24 career against Nice with two batted in. Good count for him with the pitch way off the plate, three and oh. Mm -hmm. Yep. He's going. He's swinging if it's down he the middle. The, huh? He actually got the take last night on 3 0. Four in a row, worth to first base with two outs. 50th walk of the year. And he's on base for the second time for Adam LaRoche. Well, he got the Nats on the board. In the first inning. 14th home run of the year. Classic LaRoche swing. Classic LaRoche homer. Third career homer against Nice. And now with eight RBIs. Target away. Just missed. Pretty good pitch. Adam got jammed, able to foul it back a bit off to the left. Lights playing the Mets. Nats had just returned from Arizona the last time they played the Mets, and Adam was on the DL at that time. Had that shoulder problem. Lucas Duda takes care of that. A hit, a walk in the inning. Double play ball, though, snuffed it out. We go to the middle innings. What a night for a sale. What a night for a three-run lead.
and the LaRoche Homer. This moment in history brought to you by University of Maryland, University College, Cy Young. And you just don't go in and beat the Cleveland Spiders any day of the week. He would go on to win 511 ball games, something that will not even be remotely approached anymore. He could have 311, and that probably wouldn't be approached. Do you think the other team was on the top step of the dugout yelling, who do you think you are, Cy Young? <laughs> yeah. And he said, yeah, I am. What, a, what about it, Spiders? Top of the order for the Mets, top of the fourth inning. Curtis Granderson on a sliding play coming in by Worth, retired first time up. That's a little spinning line drive over to Anthony Rendon. All right, you know the drill. And if you have cameras like that, it'll be a really good pitcher and just a really crazy close up. Hashtag Mass and Fan Photos for a chance to have it shown in future broadcasts. It's brought to you by AT&T. Here's Daniel Murphy retired on the ground ball to Espinosa. First time up. Oh. Doug Vister getting ahead. Working fast. Keeping his defense busy. 1-1 oh. one, one to Murphy who leads the National League at least and yeah, still does with hits 137 of them and he's second in multi hit games behind an art span and Hunter Pence inside the numbers on Daniel Murphy from STG so since the start of last year nobody in the National League as many hits as the Mets second baseman Murph rakes yeah, one of those widely discussed players approaching the trade deadline. Nissan will track this one. Got him on the inside corner. Murphy seeing the ball near his hands. And he is really angry with Larry Vanover. Now he turns around and looks back at the umpire. Stood there for quite a while, jawing away. It looked like the front hip sinker. It looked like a strike to me. And watch Larry Vanover knee up, rip the pages. Get your glove. That's not a strike. No, it's not. That's a ball. He's still chirping in the dugout. I'll tell you what. A lot of things you can say about Daniel Murphy. I love his intensity on a daily basis. Absolutely. He scored a run the other day against the Giants in that final game of the series. It put the Mets up, I think, three to two at the time. It was in the fifth or sixth inning. He came across home plate, pumping fist. You know, high-fiving guys in the dugout, going crazy. Almost like it was a game winner. And you just love guys that show up like that, ready to play every day. He's intense. And a ball to right. Nobody with a chance for that one off the bat of David Wright. And he'll drop one in for the Mets second base hit. You know, another thing I noticed with Murphy right there, Carpenter, it's something we've talked a lot about lately. He was looking straight down at the ground when he was saying that. Yeah. He never looked back at Vanover. He looked straight down, maybe a little bit on the way back to the dugout, but in the batter's box itself, we, we talk about showing umpires up with body language. He gets, yeah, whatever you think about the call, you think. But look, he's just looking straight down at the ground. He's not looking back at the umpire. And that's what I always talk about is you can pretty much say whatever you want as long as, you know, it doesn't get too rated R. Lucas Duda. Solid single up the middle for the Mets first hit. Leading off the second then erased on the Darno double play ball engineered by Anthony Rendon. You can say that's awful. That's terrible. But as soon as you say you're awful and you're terrible, you're gone. As soon as you direct it personally toward the umpire, that's when they've had enough. 
enough speed. Fister really pulling the string for the first time. Fourth inning before he pulled that one out. Pretty good curveball right here. Look at top of the zone. Out of the zone low. Wow. Lots of break on that 12 6 bender. Pretty big power zone. Lucas Duda having a career year. Career highs in homers 20 and RBIs 62. Short lead by David Wright, but he was kind of getting a little walking lead. He stole a base here last night in the first inning after singling in the Mets first run. A very short lead though for him. Another breaking ball off speed and Lucas Duda just hooks it into right field. David Wright will stop. And the Mets have a pair of two out hits with Travis Darno coming in. And don't forget Darno may have had the hardest hit ball of the game for the Mets first time up. It turned into a 5 4 3 double play but it was a one hop bullet to Anthony Rendon. Well, this is a big at bat. As we approach the middle of the game, big at bat for the Mets. It's a good pitch. Yeah, he went change up first time. Anthony Rendon on a foul ball. One ball, one strike. Tristan Yelich has hit his ninth homer of the year for Miami. They picked up two in the second at Pittsburgh. Crazy game early there. Bucks four, Fish three. If you missed it, the Braves lost again at Seattle today. And they can't wait to get home. They have a day off tomorrow. They'll be waiting for the Nats having lost eight in a row. The last 0 and 8 road trip for the Braves was 1949 and they were the Boston Braves. <laughs> so they got all the way through Milwaukee without that happening. And on to Atlanta. Hmm. San Diego, LA, Seattle. 2 1. That's on the outside corner. Another Van over looking into the Mets dugout. Somebody's still chirping in there. They didn't like this call either, but it's a strike. Now he's got his mask off, and Darno's trying to get in his way so that he can't see who's chirping in the dugout. Interesting move by Darno. <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah. Try to screen him out. Two two pitch up the middle Espinosa over to get it. He can scamper to the bag and end the top of the four. So Fister gives up a couple of hits. The frustrated Mets strand their first two Nats by three.
in that inning that Larry Vanover took exception to somebody in the dugout chirping. Well, we found the culprit, and guess who it is? It's Daniel Murphy. He says, get the ball on the plate, and then Vanover takes his mask off and says, who said it? I said it, Murphy. <laughs> I'm the guy. <laughs> Ownage. <laughs> Taking ownership. Okay. Oh, that's good stuff. Way to catch that guy. <laughs> That's one of the most amusing things I've ever seen. A guy who just struck out do. It was me. Here's Ian Desmond. <laughs> Two and oh. Desmond hit the ball extremely hard first time. Right up the middle, a hard line drive that carried to Juan Lagares. That was right after the LaRoche first inning home run. Yeah, most of his batting practice today was up the middle the other way. He was working on staying through the baseball and hitting oh. it right back where it came from. A walk over three last night. Off to the right side. Ian Desmond's last base hit was the sixth inning Saturday in the blowout of the Phillies. So 0 for 12 since. But Ian Desmond couldn't turn it right back on as quickly as anybody. When he gets a good swing or two, that's pretty good. It's going to carry though, and it's going to be caught by Curtis Granderson, reaching to his left as he hit the turf, and a hard luck Desmond is 0 for 2. Yeah, two good approaches though, two good swings up the middle the other way. There's your cap, Carp Nationals Cap Day, August 15th, 7:05 p.m. against the Pittsburgh Pirates. First 15,000 fans, 21 and over. There's a clue. Yeah, that's a, not a golf club holder, as you said last night. That's a bottle opener right there. That's it. Yeah, there you go. It's a good one. I'll tell you what, my gnome last night took that loss hard. It really did. Yeah. I, mean, I had to cheer him up. He had a few too many cold ones, and he was just bummed. He waited all Sounds year for that like game. He was bummed. He well, that too, but he waited all year for that game. Bryce Harper hits it hard the other way. I mean, this is his only game of the year. He's 0 and 1. That's it. And they had to talk him off the ledge last night. Yeah. Well, he had a great run. So we had to play. These things are going for like 120 bucks on eBay right are now. They really? Gnome Mania. Catch it. Mine has issues though. 1 1 to Harper. And Bryce looks at the breaking ball outside. Pulled the ball hard. First time up, Lucas Duda made a good grab and beat him to the bag when Jonathan Neese did not cover. Then a 2 1 to Bryce. Target away. Kind of stepping to a right field on that swing. No way he's going to get to that. Jonathan Neese averaging 16 pitches per inning tonight. Doug Fister. At about 12. Harper laces one to center. Bryce aboard. First hit of this series. Now back to back line drives. One for an out, one for a hit. Bryce Harper stayed on that one. Nice. You see him roll that top hand. That breaks up an 0 for 13 for Bryce. You know, Barry Bonds was a guy that, that really was big on throwing that top hand. He would go in the cage, and I think I've talked about this before, and just take front toss without a bat and catch the ball with his top hand just to get it in the right slot, to get that bat head in the strike zone. And when you talk about Bryce Harper's surgery and the strength of that top hand, 
And it's going to take a minute to be able to have that swing he just had right there, but that was a good sign. Espinosa out to left center for Juan Lagares, two down. Let's see if Jose Lobaton now can get it down to Doug Fister and turn over the lineup here in the fourth inning. You look alive. The Metro Silver line is now open. They bring us our upcoming schedule with the next five. Jordan Zimmerman, Jacob DeGrom tomorrow. Steven Strasburg will pitch in Atlanta on Friday. And our friends from WUSA 9 will join us tomorrow. Well, it's going to be game on with those two guys pitching. Good pitching matchup here. Yeah. Ball ball. Had DeGrom, one of the best rookie pitchers in the league lately. There's Jose Lobaton who bounced out to Murphy at second base first time around. Reaching and hitting the ball out to center for Juan Lagares. Bryce Harper a one out single after a well hit line drive by Ian Desmond who's a tough luck 0 for 2. On to the fifth inning down there at National Harbor along the Potomac on the Maryland side. What a summer night. On his 14th, Denard Span just keeps getting on base. Doug Fister doing his thing. I would say it's a very pitcher friendly strike zone so far in this game, but Doug Fister taking advantage of that. That's what veteran guys do, and he's getting some help behind him, as he always does. Got to be ready to pick it when you're playing behind Doug. He works quick, gets a lot of ground balls, but Larry Vanover is looking for strikes. And Doug Fister is throwing them ish with two strikes. Some of those could have went either way. Kirk Neuenheis leads off top five for the Mets. He was late for an overpowering 80 mile an hour changeup. Struck out swinging first time. And Fister goes off speed again. Adam LaRoche will have it over to his pitcher, the ex first baseman, waiting for that throw. You can enjoy Freedom Fireworks one more time, I believe, Friday, August 15th, after the Nats play the Pirates. Military pageantry, patriotic theme music, the U.S. Air Force Honor Guard drill team will be here. What else do you want? Fireworks after the game, August 15th, against the Buckos. Juan Lagares. Ground ball to Danny Espinosa, first time up. Doug Fister gets a strike call. Starting to mix in. A little more off speed here and there, middle of the game. But you, but you get a veteran guy like Doug Fister that, that controls the game, controls the strike zone. If he knows he's getting two, three inches outside, he can execute that. A couple of guys in Atlanta used to do that. Yeah, maybe a younger guy, he gets a wide strike zone, really can't take advantage of it because he doesn't 
really know how to with his mechanics and being able to carve. But Doug's a guy that definitely can. If Larry Vanover is going to give him a couple inches inside, outside, or it looks like to the left-hand side of the plate. He'll use it and abuse it. Why not? Doug Vista, career 54 and 53. 143rd start. Trying to make a two for two career against New York. Payoff pitch with one out. Swing and a miss. 89 boring down on the right handed batter. Nasty. His fifth strikeout of the game. Mercedes will track it. Watch the sink, the true sink on the fastball. A lot of times you throw the term sinker around, it just runs into a righty. Look at that. Going down and running into Lagares. That's a tough one to get to for any right handed hitter. What a good pitch right there by Fister. Out front, on top. Strike three. Ruben Tejado, the number eight man. He was caught looking in the third for the second out. And of course, Fister, as any pitcher would, knows who's on deck. Wants to throw some quality pitches here and hopefully face Jonathan Neese in the sixth. 1 1 the count with two outs. I'll field around to the right a bit. Good curve. 73 up in the zone. I mean, Tejada locked up. You can turn to Larry Vanover and argue that pitch and say it was high and low. High and low. <laughs> he says, I split the difference and it was strike two. Desmond gets rid of it and a really good one, two, three inning. Taking care of business at the bottom of the order is Doug Fister. He'll lead off when we come back. Presented by authority of the Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Washington Nationals. What a night, beautiful evening at the ballpark. Three to nothing as we get to the bottom of the fifth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was just taken aback by the beautiful shot. Forgot all about the beer. <laughs> Still laughing at <laughs> This? Is yeah, that what you're laughing yeah. at? Huh? You better uh, tell them about Miller time coming yeah, up later coming in the later game, game brought game, to you yeah. by Miller Lite. Yeah, they know the drill. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you've folks. Doing, you've been doing that a lot lately. I'm just, are you getting stuck on the silver? Could you say Washington National? I'm Nationals? waiting for the tape room to cue me, and they never do. Well, they do it during the game. We're just giddy with a three run lead, admit it. Mm -hmm. And Doug Fister dealing tonight. It's F Fister to you. Doug, first time up, ground ball to short.
Jonathan Nee settling down since that rough first inning of his. And Doug Fister right at 13 pitches per inning. Of course, Nice one inning fewer. But he's only given the Nets two singles and a walk since the first inning. Took care of one of those with a double play ball off the bat of Anthony Rendon. Jonathan East is 27 years of age, 6'3, 218. He has a career record of 48 and 47. And his opponent is making him throw a bunch here. Now he works it back even to two. Seventh pitch coming. Fister. This one chased by David Wright and no way to get there. Doug Fister would appreciate that effort by David Wright on the foul ball. Yeah, if he was pitching, he probably would, would have been right over there with him. Good effort by Wright. Slides knowing that he's not going to catch it. Fister swinging a miss, but he made his opponent fire some bullets there, and that's strikeout number two for Jonathan Nice. Inside the numbers from Jeep, Denard Span coming in. So highest home averages since the 20th of May. Now Span's overall average at home this year is over 340 now, <laughs> but since third week of May, going crazy at 415. Those are the National League guys who get it done at home. McCutcheon not for the next two weeks. Then when the Nats come home a week from Friday, he won't be available then for the Pirates either. Next home stand, three with Pittsburgh, four with Arizona, three with the Giants. Arizona's the new... Atlanta this year as far as policing hit by pitches and guys getting drilled and home runs and all that stuff. Yeah, just ask the Pirates. Denard Span 1-1. One, one. A hit away from his 41st multi-hit game. The difference is you know when you're 49 and 64 it doesn't hold the same weight it does when you're a winning ball club. It just kind of looks bad. Yeah. Well, they got off to a horrible start. They've never recovered. One ball and two strikes to spin. For the Achiever in you, PNC with our minor league report. Tracking Taylor Hill. Last three starts, 16 innings, only three earned run. So that ERA coming down to 252. He's gone the distance three times. And he's also been on the mound in a safe situation for the last out. Right hander Taylor Hill at Syracuse. Breaking ball, hit well, opposite way. Tejada guns him out, two down. That'll bring in Anthony Rendon, who's hit the ball hard twice. Tejada went up the middle last time for a would-be base hit. Turned it into a 6-4-3. Well, Nice settling down, and that's trying to add on, get to that magic number four. And... Don't forget about that graphic we showed you when we came on the air. When Doug Fister gets two runs, he's almost unbeatable. Not almost. 51 and 6 when they score four runs or more. Doug Fister 10 and 0 when he's provided with two runs or more support. So I think everybody in a white uniform would be a little more comfortable with that fourth run. Eighty nine and Jonathan East got it by Anthony Rendon. Oh. 
I like Rendon stepping out right there. He wasn't ready. Looked up. Nice was going. That ball hanging. He bangs it into the left field corner. And Anthony Rendon's going to have another double tonight. This will be number 31, and he reaches 50 extra base hits. Right, he's got a great job of staying on the curveball. You get a guy like Nice, he gets into a little bit of groove. You break up his tempo, you step out, then you get back in the box and you drill a double down the left field line. Just a pretty swing. The consistency of this young hitter is just amazing. He had 23 doubles all of last year. I think the balance, we always talk about the bat quickness, and that's obviously something you really can't teach. His, his bat is so fast, but he's never really off balance when he swings. Even when he's fooled, like right there, hands are back, you know, weight 50-50, not falling forward, not all over the place, under control, and just throws the hands. A lot like Denard Span with two strikes. 31 extra base hits all of last year for Rendon. Of course, he only played 98 games. It was a very solid Major League debut. And he is going way above and way beyond as a second year guy. That ball smothered by Travis Darno. One ball, one strike. He keeps doing what he's doing next year. He's not going to have to sweat out any computer vote to get to the All Star game. He'll just be there. Adam Morose has gone deep. For the 14th time this year, way inside to Jason Worth, two and one. You know, that LaRoche homer has provided some protection to Jason Worth right here. Two outs, first base open, lefty on deck. Nice might think about pitching around Jason Worth, but because LaRoche hit a two run home run the first inning, Jason Worth may see something to hit. Two two and worth hits it hard the other way. Daniel Murphy acted as if he knew what pitch was coming and where it was going to be hit seemingly moving in that direction on the swing. Nats denied Fister still brilliant. The Adam LaRoche homer following a Jason Worth single. Nats 3 0, top of the sixth. 
Jonathan Neese against Doug Fister, who just threw his 44th strike of the night, 66 pitches, two out of every three in the zone. Jonathan Neese grounded out to second, first time up. Mets box. Three harmless singles. The leadoff one by Duda, second inning, erased in a double play. Duda again in the fourth after David Wright had blooped one in with two outs. Jonathan Neese knows he's gone and he walks away. Doug Fister, number six. All right, folks, the DCRA Toyota dealers want to help children and their families by making a donation of $37 to the children's in at NIH for every strikeout by a Nats pitcher this season. Curtis Granderson, fly ball to right, liner, a soft one to Rendon at third, and a strike from Doug Fister on the attack, getting ahead of these Mets. And Granderson lays down a base hit bunt. Just beat it. Outstanding play by Rendon to make it as close as he did. Looked like he beat it. Pretty good play by Rendon to make it that close. Bare hand play thrown on the run. And Curtis Granderson lays down a beauty. Anthony Rendon makes it close. Look at going into the Mets dugout, thrown across his body, and yeah. Granderson beat it. I don't think there's going to be any question about that. Well, that's what you have to do sometimes when you're 0 for 18. Curtis Granderson gets a hit. There's Daniel Murphy, who's 0 for 2 tonight. And at odds with the home plate umpire, Larry Vanover, last time up. Let's see if his strike zone's a little bigger this time. This could be interesting. I don't think he cares. Murphy hooks one foul. He can hit. That guy's making some kind of contact these days. I mean, that was a good pitch by Fister. Obviously caught it out front a little bit too quick, but man, just a short compact swing and yeah, he can hit. Came in hitting at even 300. 31 doubles, 39 multi-hit games. He's spread out. Good balance. Good stance. It's not like this is anything new. He's a 290 career batter. Look at him. And now Daniel Murphy gets his first knock of the night. And just like that, with David Wright coming in, the Mets have the tying run in the batter's box. Look how still the head is, staying behind the baseball. We showed you the stance spread out. Look at the balance. Look how still the head is, not even moving. And that allows you to be consistent with barrel to the baseball. That's a pretty swing. He, he might be my new Brian McCann. He can hit. David Wright. He was thinking let's tie this thing up. David's hit eight homers this year driven in 54. Blooped one in last time down the right field line. It's a good pitch by Fister and a good take by David Wright. He swings at that. It's on the ground. David Wright should do 16 double plays this year.
Look, Granderson got this started with that bunt base hit. Got dug off the stretch. Hadn't been there in two innings. Murphy got the hit. David Wright fouls another. And the count one ball two strikes. And Fister's teased the top of the strike zone with the last two fastballs. And this might be a case if you triple up with it. And go higher than high now. Climb the ladder just a little bit. He's saying it like it's a video game, but if you can execute it like a neck high fastball, you, you might get him to chase. And it's a front door curveball that stayed inside. Nissan tracks the entire at bat. Green bad, red good. You just can't get that kind of analysis anywhere else. Seriously. That was that was outstanding. Thanks. See, is, and I could say that wasn't very good, but I can't say you weren't very good. That's right. Because then it becomes personal, yeah. and the umpire throws no, me out. No, I'll throw you out. <laughs> as long as it's not personal, yeah. say whatever you want. That wasn't very good, FP. Yeah, that's fine. Well, I, I, if I say your name, that yeah. makes it personal. That's right. I have to throw you out. 2-2. Hot shot. Rendon. Espinosa. The Nets go around the horn again. I'll tell you what, Espy turns it as good as anybody in baseball. I mean, nice play by Rendon to start it, but Danny Espinosa is just fun to watch at second base. I'm sorry. Rendon, a couple of hot shots. Watch the feed right on the money and watch Espinosa do his thing. Smooth. Mercedes-Benz of Alexandria. 3 nothing still. Three runs in the first. They've been the story of this game on offense, and Doug fister has been the story of this game on the mound. But Adam LaRoche with a two-run tater right in the middle of his happy place. Look at that. Right down Broadway, and Adam LaRoche goes big fly to right to make this a 3 to nothing game, and the Beards got it done in the first. He did his own PNC report with that fly ball off the facade out there. Adam swinging first pitch, bottom six. Ruben Tejada takes care of it. The Nationals since that first inning, two singles, a double. All the scoring right after Span grounded out. Rendon slammed a double off the right center field wall. Worth blooped one into right to drive him in, 63rd RBI. And then LaRoche deep, RBI total jumped up to 58 on his 14th home run. Anthony Rendon, pair of doubles tonight. 50 extra base hits. And Ian Desmond finally gets rewarded for gashing one somewhere. There you go. Lined out to center, lined out to right, and landing on turf in left center. Three great swings by the Nats shortstop. Three missiles, three low liners off the bat of Ian Desmond tonight. First one to center field, second one to right field, and this one right up the middle. And he hit it lower. And this one drops. Good swing by the Nats shortstops. Three good 
approaches tonight for me and Desmond. Like I said in BP, everything was up the middle the other way, and you see the results. The Nats need him. The Nats need Harper. So Ian breaks up an 0 for 13. Bryce broke up an 0 for 13 with a base hit last time up. Desmond the jump and he's in there easily. Stays on the bag and Ian Desmond swipes his 12th of the year. Eight more stolen bases, three more home runs, and it's back to back to back 2020 seasons for the National Shortstop. And he had that bag ripped. The only thing was, you got to get back to the bag. <laughs> Going too fast. Well, what a great way to set up the opportunity to get that four run lead we're looking for here. That's outside to Bryce, and Harper has a count of 2 0. Oh. Eighty seven up and away. Nobody throwing but they are stirring stretching moving around in the Mets bullpen in left field. This might be a good time to get Bryce Harper green line. Why not? It, it might be the last fastball you see. It might get you locked in last time up bullet up the middle. By the way the phone just rang out there and the Mets scurry into activity. Buddy Carlisle just popped up and that's his first toss. 3 1 Harper drops his bat and he'll have to come back. Obviously Bryce thought it was ball four. Pitch track thought it was ball four and Larry Vanover was the only one that counts. He thought it was strike two. Pitcher friendly zone all night. 3 2. And you better be hacking at anything close right here if you're Bryce Harper. That's ball four, Larry Vanover says. And the Nats have two aboard with one out here. Like I said, you should take anything really close if you're Bryce Harper. That was close. That was a good like take. The last pitch. And now the Mets pitching coach Dan Worthen may be buying some time for the bullpen. As a tough matchups coming up for Jonathan Neese, even though he's retired Danny Espinosa twice. Danny five career hits a double against him. Martina McBride. She's coming to Nats Park. Really? Yes, Saturday, August 16th, he said to himself, don't miss the last night's like post game concert of the season presented by the Travel Channel. That's free with your ticket, so you get a concert for free after the game, and it's going to be her. That'll be on the next homestand when the battling buckos are here from the Berg. I, I know one thing, if I'm a musician and I'm going to play the post game concert next year for the Nats. I want the last one because I get the most promos. Remember Dirk Smith a couple years ago? I mean, he had to miss it because of an unfortunate family incident, but that's right. He got like 8 billion, I believe, was the we number. Gave, I, I totaled it up. We gave him $122,000 worth of free ads. Yeah. Just you and me. And he lived up to it because he was fantastic. Danny Espinosa. Strikeout swinging to lead off the second. Fly ball to center, second out in the fourth. And a spot here in the sixth to break this game open for the Nationals. He just needed an on. He scored, Big gap. scored that three early, a couple more, and that's how you get teams to kind of roll over. Big gap right center. Pitch up and away, 1 1. One well to left. Newen Heist going back. Gone. He does break the game open. The Nationals lead 6 0. That's 
number seven for Danny Espinosa. His first home run since May 12th, and it's a big one for the Nats. How good does that feel for Danny Espinosa? How good does that feel for everybody in the first base dugout? Well, that hasn't said a whole lot since the trade to get Cabrera there. Cabrera there. High fiving guys. This keeps working behind the scenes and it pays off. He keeps doing stuff like that. He might play himself into a straight platoon with as Dribble Cabrera. I mean, he's looked sharp at second base today, which isn't easy when you're not playing. He looks sharp right there with a ooh, three run tater. Lobatone smokes one just foul. So the Nats finally make it to 90 home runs. First time they've hit two in a game in quite some time. And Danny Espinosa's RBI total jumps up to 25. What a sweet piece of contact that was. Good to see him smile. Last time the Nats hit two homers in the same game, July 13th. That was a 10-3 win at Philadelphia. This ball a carry to Curtis Granderson for the second out off the bat of Lobatone. Jason Worth hit a three-run homer in the first inning that night. We could just tell a little excited his first time up, and the leg kick was much bigger. This time he kind of abbreviates the leg kick. Catches one out front, and Jonathan Neese can't believe it's out of here, but you know that's the advantage you have playing. The whole game and not just having one at bat. Yeah. You know, first at bat, that leg kick was all the way up around his chest. Second at bat flew out to center, made the adjustment in his third at bat, and put his team up by six. So Worth and Zimmerman, July 13th, and on August 6th, LaRoche Espinosa. Here's the 0-1 to Doug Fister. Nasty breaking ball. Puts it in play right side Lucas Duda. What a good inning for the Nats. A base hit by Ian Desmond who's hit the ball hard three times tonight. Bryce Harper works a good walk and then Danny Espinosa loses one to left field his 54th career home run the Nats by six. Teddy blindfolded. Big Bill slipping in between. Hey, a firing squad? Not exactly sure what's going on here. Firing squad? No. Can't do that. Too soon? This doesn't look good. Oh, my goodness gracious. But that's plastic surgery on the noses, at least, right? Numbers one and three. But that's a just that's a bad gate right there. What is this? What is this? 
Pumping those little it's arms. Definitely not an Olympic sprinter. Well, if you folks figure out what we just saw, let us know. Look at Doug Fister. What a pass is off the mound and throws out Lucas Duda on a little bouncer to the third base side. Well, he wants to win a gold glove. We talk about it all the time, and this is how you get one. Doug Fister with the shift on. He knows it. Gets over there. Bare hand play. Gets rid of it quick. Throws a sinker. What else to Adam LaRoche? <laughs> Nicely done. Straight up for Jason Worth. Steven Souza Jr. will get Jason off his feet for the rest of the night in a six-run game. One out, top seven. Here's Travis Darno. He's hit the ball on the ground twice, once hard into a double play. And then the bouncer up the middle, Danny Espinosa, went to the bag unassisted to strand two runners in the fourth. Matt Williams probably trying to get Jason Worth off that ankle that he's been playing with. Six run lead. You know, maybe make yourself a little more mobile defensively and get Jason Worth off his feet. It's a good move. Yeah, and then Steven Souza Jr. will get an A-B in the bottom of this inning. Tearing it up at Syracuse. Just crazy good numbers down there. With the batting average, the on-base percentage. The homers, the extra base hits, and a ball hacked out to left by Darno. Bryce Harper drifting, he's under it. Two down. All right, we promised you earlier in the game, here's your AT&T fan photo. A couple of buddies at the ballpark, I like it. Right down the left field line, having some fun at the yard, and I'm just gonna say she's a lifeguard, I don't know why. Kirk Neuenheis, strikeout, ground ball 0 for 2. On. That is buried down and in to the left handed batter. Doug Fister looking for number 11 tonight. Trying to go seven or more for the tenth time. His longest outing of the year, eight innings in a three nothing game against the Braves here on June 21st. One two pitch. Close. How many starts you think Fister has left, Clark? Well, this is game number 112, so there are 50 games left, so 10 starts basically, right? Mm -hmm. Fair ball. LaRose gets it. Looks for his pitcher. Who's waiting for him? And Doug Fister looks at Adam LaRoche, gives him a point. Well done. 3-1, and it's time to stretch in D.C. I'm telling you what, when you got a pitcher on the mound, it's a gamer, a baseball player that happens to pitch, you're playing defense behind him, you want to make plays like this, and Admiral Roche is good as anybody with the glove.
to you by Ocean City, Maryland. Put your vacation days to good use in Ocean City. Book now at OCOcean.com. By Charles Schwab, own your tomorrow. And by Night Point Systems, they offer the technology you need when you need it. Tonight, it's the fair pole. And a Marosh hit one out of here fair. Danny Espinosa has hit one out of here fair. And the Nets using the long ball to lead 6-0. Has a nice crowd. Goes into the stretch. Right now, your summer home to watch future baseball stars. Woodbridge, Virginia, down at the Fitz. A lot of great promotions coming up honoring immortals such as Worth and Keel. And the highly anticipated... Cowboy Monkey Rodeo, 703-590-2311, PotomacNationals.com. There's just something cool about hearing you say Cowboy Monkey Rodeo. I'm sorry. Yeehaw. Not my first rodeo. That would be, though. <laughs> well, there's Buddy Carlisle. Just added to the Mets bullpen recently. Minor league free agent contract, February 18th. 36 year old veteran who's been with the Padres, the Dodgers, the Braves, and most recently the Yankees, but that was three years ago. This guy's been around professional baseball since 1996. So we'll check the matchups here with Denard Spann leading off the bottom of the seventh. Crowd of 26,701 settling in. There are some Nats who have faced Buddy Carlisle. Denard Spann, not one of them. Kirsten LaRoche, worth of the active players have. Well, Denard Spann, one for three tonight. Ground ball to right, to the right side. Base hit to left, and a hot shot to the shortstop last time. Inside edge, strike one. Hey, a four-seam fastball, 92. He'll sink it at 91. He's got a cutter in the high 80s. Curveball, 74, and a change at 86. It'll be Spann, Rendon, and Souza. For the Nationals, bottom seven. That's Junior ready to hit. Right side, Daniel Murphy. Inside the numbers with Jeep, with Rendon coming in. So since July 1st, Anthony Rendon has scored 26 runs now. He leads, well, he did lead the National League until yesterday in run score with 78. Hunter Pence at 79. You should sell that at the concession stand. That's a Nationals trout sandwich right there. Look at that. <laughs> See Mike Trout versus Clayton Kershaw last night. That was good stuff. Got a couple of knocks off Kershaw. Kershaw got him on strikes third time. And they're talking about a Southern California World Series down there. Yeah. Well, There's a lot of regions that are talking about World Series with their American League and National League team. Bay Area. Beltway. Cal and Beltway. Yeah. Anthony Rendon tonight, a pair of doubles. In typical Rendon style, one of them right center off the scoreboard, the other down the left field line. A young man who showed us in his rookie year last season that he could use the whole ballpark. And this year, he's just kept on doing it. Well, he's abused the whole ballpark this year.
Last year, as I mentioned earlier, 98 ball games. 351 at bats, hit 265 as a rookie. But I, I didn't hear anybody say, well, we need to see him for a whole season before we know. I, I, nobody said that because they just liked so much of what they saw last year, and so did we. We couldn't wait to see him for 150 to 160 games. Well, he got stronger, then. and that's been the difference. You know, he dedicated himself in the offseason to putting some weight on, getting stronger, and, you know, you didn't see 20 home, prop, home run pop last year, but you do now. There's some pop, right center again. And Juan Lagares cruising to it in the gap. He's a tough out. The double play ball he hit in earlier tonight was hard hit to short. Okay, it's your Masson word of the day, and it's rundown. Text 29292 for your chance to win lunch with Matt Williams. Stay tuned all week long for more chances to win. Rundown. Steven Souza Jr. Recalled two days ago when Nate McLeod went on the DL with shoulder inflammation. At the time, hitting 354 with a 435 on base percentage at Syracuse, and he goes up hack. Oh, that's a quick bat. 43 extra base hits, including 18 home runs, 24 steals. Turned 25 late April. Third rounder. From seven years ago. Out of Cascade High School out in Washington. Pretty good eye. Good take, 1 1. I would imagine with his numbers in AAA and just the way he approaches the game and all the tools that before the tread deadline, the phone was off the hook with questions about the guy in the batter's box right now. Oh, yeah. Target in. Better get it in there. They didn't, and he creams it just to the left of the pole. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you talk about a quick bat and a ball getting out of here in two seconds? My goodness. Oh, he just got a glimpse of what Junior brings to the table. And that's up on the concourse. That's up on the concourse. <laughs> and <laughs> watch how fast this swing is. Wow. It really didn't have that much hook on it, and Souza kept running to first base. He wasn't sure it was foul. That's the most exciting foul ball of the year, folks. They had to call him back from beyond the first base bag. Good take. Just missed. As a big leader, one hit and nine at bats. It was one for four with a walk in five games. First time he got called up. And Denard Spann went on the concussion list back in April. Came back when Bryce Harper hurt his thumb. End of April. And now here he is in August. I don't think Buddy Carlisle is going to try anything middle in anymore. <laughs> 2 2 pitch with the bases empty, two outs. Well, we might have found somebody as quick from A to B as Anthony Rendon. Look at that. That's a short swing. That's a powerful swing. Said Captain Obvious once again. That's exciting. I want to see him try to get in there again. 2 2 pitch oh. and Sousa extending to foul that one. Seven plus years in the minor leagues. Over 90 home runs, 154 stolen bases. And then that signed him. He had signed a letter of intent already with Washington State. And one of the Nats great scouts up in the Northwest, Doug McMillan. This, he was the last player signed by Doug, scouted and signed. Doug passed away shortly thereafter. His legacy lives on with Steven Souza Jr. Lagares takes care of the fly ball. One, two, three, go the Nets with a little bit of noise in the seventh. Now, Doug Fister back to work.
Two home runs to none. Good to see the long ball driving in some runs. It's been a while, almost a month, since the Nats had a multi-home run game. And Danny Espinosa, I mean, that was a long time coming. Yeah, it's nice to see him have a nice night tonight. You check in with that three-run home run, play good second base, get a chance. But uh, you look at the way the Nats have played tonight. They've done everything well. Yeah. Offense, defense, Doug Fister doing his thing, attacking the strike zone. So you know, we talked about enjoy the journey, enjoy the ride at the beginning of the game tonight. And how can you not enjoy this? Well, Doug Fister sets the tone early. Comes out in the first inning with a 1-2-3 frame on nine pitches. Seven strikes. And here he is, seven innings later, trying to at least equal his long outing of the year. Juan Lagares, Ruben Tejada, and then a pinch hitter for the Mets. This is over the dugout, and the closest fielder is the pitcher, Doug Fister, in foul territory, chasing that foul ball. He's into it, man. Game on. It's a good thing he's communicating right here because, you know, everybody's going for this ball that's 30 rows back. You just don't want to crash into anybody going over there. <laughs> love it. Absolutely love it. You know, he is so old school. In a lot of ways, it's something new. He just does things that we don't see from anybody else. Pretty good jamage. And then fighting it into right field is Juan Lagares. First base hit tonight and his second of the series. All right, fans, follow every Nats game with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. Get live look-ins, instant replay, scores, stats, audio, free MLB.tv game of the day and more. Download the App Store. Visit Nationals.com today, tonight, tomorrow, yesterday. Ruben Tejada called third strike in the third. Ground ball to short to end the fifth. Swing, says Dan Isonia, down at first base. Hot shot. Rendon again. Espinosa. Everybody's safe. Anthony threw him a short hop. Danny trying to pick it and still attempt the double play. Yeah, that's one you're better suited just getting the out of second base once Anthony Rendon drops the baseball. You come across and almost play like first baseman right there and just stretch and get the out. Once he drops the ball. It's going to be tough to turn, but you know, you got guys that are that good trying to make the spectacular play. You can live with that once in a while. It was coming from a good place. He was trying to turn it, but the speed of Ruben Zahada, I don't think he would have, even if he does pick that clean. Fielder's choice and an error, but we're trying to determine if they said E4 or E5. No, it's not E4. The ball's in the dirt. Low throw by Rendon, resulting in the error. And Eric Campbell, rookie outfielder, started the ball game last night. Came in hitting 319, but he went 0 for 4. And his first look at Doug Fister, who punches him out on the outer half. Not the at bat the Mets were looking for with two men on and nobody out. And it just runs back the fastball, moving around. See the first two pitches in, third pitch away, three pitch see. It. Not going to do it for Doug Fister. Matt Williams out of the dugout. That was pitch number 101. What do you got? Seven and a third. Matt Thornton, the newest net. I think he signaled to the bullpen already. That's going to do it for Frister. I might give him a chance to get the shutout. Not going to happen. Yeah, he'll go seven and a third. One of his longest outings of the year.
Strikes out seven. And Doug Fister, a six hitter, six nothing Washington. have a 6-0 lead. On is Matt Thornton to make his first appearance as a national. Thornton was acquired yesterday in a trade with the Yankees, and he said today when he reported to the clubhouse that he was blindsided by that deal, and things were a little chaotic for him for about an hour after the trade from the Yankees here to the Nationals as he tried to wrap his head around that deal. He didn't expect it to happen before the non-waiver trade deadline, much less after it, but he says he's a very loyal guy to organizations that are loyal to him. He's excited to join the Nationals and he was acquired by the Red Sox last year in July, was left off the postseason roster. He said that really has motivated him last uh, offseason and coming into this season. He wants to get back to the postseason, and he's excited to be here with the Nats. So a waiver pickup by the Nationals after going 0-3, but a 2.55 ERA in 46 games for the Yankees. Didn't give up a homer in 25 innings. 20 strikeouts, 6 walks, 37 years of age. Longtime White Sox lefty, a little, little bit of time with Boston last year. Started his big league career back in 04 with Seattle. Well, first pitch 95, that one 96. And that's what, about where his fastball sits 95, 96. He'll touch 97 occasionally. And also elevate with two strikes. Granderson. Hitting it the other way. So 95, 96, 97. I'm going to go out on limb and say this one's 98. Unless he goes to his curveball. Also has a change, but I won't throw that to Granderson. Oh my wow, gosh. that's close to the hands of Curtis Granderson. Well, he threw that fastball away, and Granderson was diving out there to protect the outer half of the plate at 97, and that was a, a hit or be hit. Look where this ball hits. Right on whew, the handle. Ball's got pine tar on it, wherever it went. Granderson pops it up. Bryce Harper in left, runners are holding. Two down. This would be some matchup here, huh? Lefty, lefty. Thornton and the hot Daniel Murphy, who in this series has four hits already, and he's been on base five times. Well, pretty good heater, right? 96, 97? Yeah. Sure does. Zero ERA in three games for the White Sox in the division series 08 against Tampa Bay. He made the All Star team in 2010 when he had a 267 ERA for the Sox in 61 games. Struck out 81 in 61 innings that year. This is a live arm the Nats have added to their bullpen. And a guy at his age who's been there, done that. 
By the way, 101 pitches, 69 strikes for Doug Fister in seven and a third. Perfect fastball, outside edge, strike nice. two. 96. I like the downhill he's got going on right now. Have gun will travel. Yeah, the left hander Murphy defensively swinging there. It's a free and easy 96. Really nice ovation for Doug Fister when he came off the mound right there from the fans here at Nats Park and just kind of cemented his status as the horse of this bullpen, the ace tonight. Staff, excuse me. Visiting with Kevin Franzen on the heels of another outstanding effort. Six hits, didn't walk a batter. Seven strikeouts, he hardly ever walks anybody. I think I'm reading lips again. I think Franzen said, You're really, 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 really good. That's what he's saying. And I'm glad I'm not facing it. No, I'm not kidding. Breaking stuff is sharp too. Is it? That was a slider at 90. <laughs> Trying to close out the eighth inning. Two, two bullet for a one and two pitch. That was a bullet that just missed. And Larry Vanover took a long look at this. Look at everything down and away. Just kind of a crossfire guy. Stepping one way, throwing the other side of the plate. Got like what you're seeing so far. And he goes with the breaking ball. Murphy gets a bat on it. Espinosa can't keep it out of the outfield. And the Mets are on the board. RBI by Murphy on his second hit of this night. And now he has 40 multi hit games this year. He can hit. I mean, left on left, guy throw a 97 mile an hour fuzz. You hang in there on a nasty slider down the way and get the barrel to the baseball. Two out RBI knock. I don't think it mattered if Espinosa got that. Might have saved the run. But I think Ligaris was going all the way and what a nice piece of hitting by the Mets second baseman. Unearned run because of the error. There's David Wright. Ninety six running away for the right handed batter who foul tipped it. To say this about the Cardinals bullpen in, in 2012, I think it applies for a lot of bullpens in the major leagues now. You got guys throwing 95, 96, 97, upper 90s. As a manager, you, you really don't have to play matchups because 97, 98 play against whoever. I mean, it gets out right handers, it gets out left handers. Oh, two to David Wright, busted bat. Desmond to Espinosa, and the inning is over. Mets pick up an unearned run with a couple of hits. The Nationals by five into the bottom of the eighth.
before. You're going to hear it again. Adam LaRoche with his 14th home run of the year makes it three to nothing. Two run job, a couple of beards, crossing home plate. And then how about some leather for you, too? So lumber and leather from the Nats' first baseman here tonight. Just selling out right there. What a play. Perfect feed. Doug Fister pumped. Adam LaRoche is pumped as he gets. So our Honda Nets do up bottom of the eighth inning. And what they've done in this series, Adam LaRoche coming alive tonight with the two run home run. Ian Desmond finally a knock. He's hit the ball hard all three times. And Bryce Harper, like Ian, has broken up an 0 for 13 with a base hit tonight. Mets will counter with 31 year old Carlos Torres. A lot of fastballs. And 92 up and away. Adam LaRoche against Torres Carrero for four with a pair of walks. A lot of cut fastballs. In the low 90s. Big shift is on, and Adam was trying to jump all over that high heater. Shortstop and second baseman. Short right fielders. Eighty three not a bad looking pitch two and one. Adam LaRoche has gotten his August off to a decent start. He's seven for 20 with two doubles a home run now and a pair of walks. After a tough month of July. And Ross Detweiler looks like for the ninth. A couple of left handed bats coming up for the Mets Duda and Neuenheis with Darno in between. Adam LaRoche sounds good out to center. See you later. And it's a two home run, three RBI night for Adam Viva La Roche. The first now with a multi home run game this season. You're looking at him. It's Adam LaRoche. Second home run of the night. And he's not even to Atlanta yet and talking to Chipper Jones. Tapper left side. Ian Desmond trying to leg one out. He's out on a close play. Well played by David Wright. Well, 23rd time Adam LaRoche has hit two or more home runs. You're looking at number two right there. And just the balance tonight. You can just see the torque. And he's letting the ball get deeper. And they've been working at creating that angle down to the baseball and right to it. You're seeing it tonight working big time. A little forearm bash for Bryce Harper. What a night. Great play at first. A couple of homers. Rick Shu saying I taught you everything you know. Nice. Well, that bat's been a little quiet. It is warming up here in August, making lots of noise. Harper to the outside edge and Bryce with a count 1 1. He has walked and scored, singled. And against Torres, one for four. Got ball on the field and right. Ball ricocheted evidently out of the bullpen.
Henry back? Last September on the seventh against the Miami Marlins, Ryan Zimmerman hit two home runs. Last nap to do it before tonight. It's been a while. I think I heard an announcement that was the 23rd multi homer game in the career of Adam LaRoche. Yeah, because I said it right next to you. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's what we heard. <laughs> I heard it twice. <laughs> Jacob DeGrom takes on. Jordan Zimmerman tomorrow and DeGrom has six wins at 277 ERA. I voted for him for National League Rookie Pitcher of the Month. He went 4 0 in August and he's 5 0 with a 104. Jordan Zimmerman trying to stop his momentum in what the Nats hope is a rubber game tomorrow. Danny Espinosa, a big blow of the game from the other side of the plate last time up. All right, we promised you earlier in the game it's Miller time brought to you by Miller Lights. And just like you were talking about, the backbreaker tonight for the Mets, Danny Espinosa digging out an off speed pitch, lining it into the bleachers and left. And that would give the Nationals a 6 nothing lead. Yeah, Jonathan Nice was stunned that Danny was able to go down and do that with that pitch. Pretty good helmet taker off her guy right there. Ian Desmond, you see that little flip of the helmet, then he caught it. That was impressive. Nasty breaking ball. He was on the run. He took the helmet off. He did a couple of flips, caught it. Nice. Becoming an art form down it there. It is. Give that one a nine and a half. One and two to Danny Espinosa here in the eighth. What a bad two strike swing trying to serve one the other way. Nationals trying to go back to 10 over 500. With the Braves losing today. Within reach now of a four game lead in the East. Espinosa fights one off, it's heading foul. Got to take advantage when the other team is scuffling and the Braves are coming off an 0 and 8 road trip. Espinosa strikes out. In their previous 13 games since Ryan Zimmerman got hurt, the Nats had hit two home runs total. How about three tonight?
Fister. He went seven and a third, gave up six hits. One run on a trickler into right field by Daniel Murphy, but he struck out seven Mets and didn't walk anybody. Just attacking the strike zone, mostly with his fastball tonight. The sinker was sinking. Had a good curve to go with it, change up at times, but just totally in command. And had a standing ovation going off the field and kind of establishing himself as the Nationals ace. Well, you were asking me earlier, we figured out maybe 10 more starts. He's about to go 11 and three. Not bad when you miss the first five weeks of the season. Honda Dua, top of the ninth for the Mets. Lucas Duda this series with three hits. Travis Darno busy offensively despite only one knock. And then Kirk Neuenheis, 0 for 3 tonight. They all face Ross Detweiler. A fastball average in 93. The breaking ball is the curve and occasional change. Thirty third appearance for Ross. Trying to get the last three outs here against the Mets. By the way, the Nats efficient offense tonight. Seven runs, nine hits, three runners stranded. Three. Oh. Counts even one one. Lucas Duda tonight two for three. He's having a good year against Russ Detweiler career one for nine with a walk and two strikeouts. Okay. Fastball nasty right under his hands. The reason I asked you Carl, how many more starts Doug Fister has because I'm, honestly stranger things have happened but he had a chance to win 20 games. And get three outs he's got 11. What did you say 10 more starts 10 more. With 50 games remaining after tonight. I mean it would be one heck of a run but like I said stranger things have happened. One and two and a check swing by Duda on a pitch that was low. Deadweiler with a good looking fastball again running under the hands of the left handed batter. I just move it around cut one away then comes back in right there at 94. Well, two seam action on that runner inside to Lucas Duda. Next up, the catcher Travis Darno. Oh. He is throwing a good heater right now. 93. She's at the knees. Darno facing Detweiler for the first time. Goes to right. Sousa comes in and traps it, able to keep the ball in front of him. Travis Darno, first base hit tonight. Good swing by Darno. Good effort by Sousa. And a good job of keeping that ball in front of him. If that goes to the wall, who knows? Chris Young will be the pinch hitter. Started last night in right field. One for three with a base hit, walk, and a run scored. He was the base runner that Jason Worth threw out at the plate last night.
And Chris Young, one for seven career. Couple of walks, a double, three strikeouts against Ross Detweiler. Into right for Souza. Long way to come for this one. And he's there, sliding to the second out in the ninth. Danny Espinosa showing some range by getting out there as well. Junior just trying to get his uniform dirty at this point. Selling out for the first one, now sliding for this one. You see the communication? I got it, I got it, I got it. Espinosa peels off. Nicely done. You could pretty much say that about this entire ball game tonight. Right. Johnny and Ray next with Nats extra. By the way, Miami now trailing at Pittsburgh 7 3 7 inning. So the Nats could gain ground on just about everybody in the division tonight. At least the three teams closest behind them. And the last hope for the Mets, Juan Lagares. 0 for 2 career against Detweiler. And Ross Detweiler is pitching right now with as much confidence as he has his entire career. He has really transformed into a solid left-handed reliever here. Well, one thing you can take away from tonight's game is you got two lefties in your bullpen that throw mid-90s. How about that? Took a little bit off with the breaking ball and missed upstairs. And a 2 1 pitch. High fly. The Nats are going to be 10 games over 500 and four up on the Atlanta Braves. As Souza puts it away, Detweiler a scoreless ninth, and in two hours and 31 minutes, the Nats will take care of the Mets 7 1. Well, I can't play any better than they did tonight. Offense, defense, Doug Fister, bullpen, lefties throwing cheese, and Matt Williams' ball club takes their biggest lead against the Braves four games. They've never been four games up this year. And a chance to add another half game on to that tomorrow before heading to Atlanta. All around an outstanding win tonight.